Hello again, this is Rod Ward from Info Semantics, and today we're going to show you a tutorial all about menu slides. Now, a menu slide is usually a slide in your project that allows a person to navigate to various sections within the project. And you might have four or five or six or seven sections in there. You want to provide them with a way to jump to those sections via this menu slide. Now, you can actually use the table of contents that is built into Captivate to do that, to jump to those sections, but the table of contents will usually show you a whole lot of other um, possibilities as to where you might navigate in the project. So sometimes you just want a slide that is for a, a given part of your um, learning course and you want them to just be restricted to jumping to those areas or just concentrate on those areas first. And then you might also want to make that menu slide a little bit more complex as you go along and give some feedback as to which sections the user has visited. And then you might want to take it to another level again and um, maybe show and hide extra things on that menu slide to give them more possibilities to navigate elsewhere after they've completed all the sections. So that's what we're going to show you how to do today. So you just have a look at this particular example. We've got um, a main menu slide. I have five sections in this little demonstration project. There's the sections over here on the table of contents as well. But if I jump to section one, there's no content on the section, so don't worry about that. We're just looking at this aspect of how the navigation works. So I have a button here after I had viewed this slide to jump back to the main menu slide. And now I have a check mark that's appeared on section one that wasn't there before. And if I do section two and then come back to the menu, yep, there's another tick mark that's appeared. I don't have to do them in order. I can go to section five there and come back and the check mark has appeared for that one. And after I complete all of the sections, now I've just got one more to do. And once I've visited that section, I come back and the main menu now is displaying an extra caption to tell me now I've completed all those sections, I can click this button to go to the quiz in uh, the project and start the quiz. So that's a sort of an example of a, a menu slide. How would you set that up in practice? And that's what we're going to show you today. But first, we're going to take you through to a very simple example. So just taking away all the complexity right down to the bare bones, what you need at the very least on a menu slide is just an interactive object. In this case, I'm using a, a smart shape button and its action is set to jump to another slide the slide that's called section one and on that slide on section one there's another button which will jump you back to the main slide so its action is jump to slide in this case main menu each of the sections that's that button there is going to jump you to the start of section two and when you get to section two the button there will jump you back to the main menu again so just have a look at that particular example it's very, very simple, just the bare bones, so that we get our head around how this all works at a very basic level, and then we'll have a look at it in a slightly more complex version, and then a slightly more complex version again. So on this one, I've got my buttons here. I jump to section one. I jump back to the menu. There's no change. Nothing has changed about the menu. Section two, again, section three, nothing has changed. So that's a very basic example. But if I go up to my uh, variables and advanced actions, I don't need any complexity in this particular example. So there are no extra variables here that I had to use or create. And if I look at my advanced actions, to achieve what I just showed you, there are no advanced actions in this project. No um, conditional actions or standard actions have been used. So that's the bottom end of the scale. What about if we wanted to have some feedback on the menu slide to indicate that a section had been visited? What would we have to do to set that up? So let's go over to this example now. And so on the menu slide now, we have these check mark, little check mark images. Now, they're visible at the moment here in edit mode, but if you just go over here and have a look at this little mark here, this is highly important and it's very easy to miss. And if you've been used to earlier versions of Captivate, like 5, 6, or 7, you would not recognize that this is actually the marker to tell you that this object is not visible in output. And if I just click that, so the little eye appears, 
that means it would be visible in output. So these buttons, for instance, they're set to visible in output, but these images, the feedback images, they've got a little slash through it to indicate they're not visible in output. So please get used to looking for that, whether it's on or it's off like it is there now. It's critical to the success of what you're doing when you're hiding and showing objects in Captivate 8. So I've got objects here that are hidden at the moment, these check marks, and they would be made to appear. Why would they appear? Well, that's where we get into now a little bit more complexity. We're going to look at our variables dialog in this project. And you'll notice now I have, for this example, five variables I've created. Section 1 completion status, Section 2 completion status, Section 3, Section 4, Section 5, they're all named completion status. They're initially set to a value of 0. Now, there's a type of variable called a Boolean variable, which only has two values, either on or off. And in the case of uh, a Boolean variable, it's very common to use 0 for off and the value of 1 for on. And that's what we're going to do in this case. We've set each of these two off, so they're saying the completion status of that section is off. It hasn't been done. So what else do we need in addition to variables? Well, we need an advanced action. So if I go and have a look at my advanced actions dialog, I will see that I have now an ad one advanced action here called setup menu slide. Now I'll show you what later on why it's called setup menu slide. It's actually executed by the on slide enter event of the menu slide. So what does that variable actually look like? Uh, sorry, what does that conditional action look like? Well, it's got five sections, section one done, section two done, section three done, section four, section five done. And each of those sections is just looking at, first of all, this completion variable that we've set up for each of the sections. Now, it's currently by default equal to zero, and it's looking here in the conditional to see whether it's equal to one, meaning that it's been done. And if it is, then it's going to show the little image, the check mark that I showed you before. So this little one out here that's selected, that's image section one done. And the next one will be image section one, um, section two done. Now, if the conditional finds that the variable is still set to off, then the else action here would hide that, that item. So it would remain hidden. It should stay hidden. In other words, it's already hidden. And this is just a little precaution that you can use. Use the else actions to ensure that it will remain hidden. Okay, and that's done in each of these sections. It just checks the variable of the completion status for that section. If by chance it's now been set to one, then it will show the, the feedback image. So that advanced action is executed when you get to the menu slide. It looks at the variables, but the question you might be wondering is, how does the variable get changed from zero to one? I'm glad you asked. Well, that's actually done when you jump to that slide. Remember, slides have an on enter action, an on enter event rather, and they have an on exit event. It's not necessarily a good idea to use the on exit event because sometimes it never gets there. But it, if you get into a slide, you are always going to execute that um, on enter event. So in this particular case, we're using the on enter event of the section slide to change the completion status variable to a value of one. So there it is, on enter, assign, assign is using the assign action, assign, this is the variable section one completion status with one. And on entering section two, it does the same thing for the section two status. So try and get the picture now. What happens is the user will click the button on the menu slide that jumps him over to the slide. As it's coming into the slide, the on enter event will fire. It will change the variable, the tracking variable to one to indicate that they got to that section. And then when the user jumps back via the button to get back to the uh, menu slide again, then that more complex conditional action will be fired. And it will go through and look at all the these tracking variables for each of these sections. And if they're set to one, it will show the little check mark to indicate that that section has been done. So let's just have a quick look and see how that looks in practice.
Okay, so here we are at the uh, the published version, and there's our menu slide. I click that one to go to section one. When I return to the main menu, now my previously invisible check mark has appeared. I go to section two. When I return back to the main menu, section two's check mark has appeared. Remember, when I click here to jump there, it's the on slide enter event of the section that changes the variable, the tracking variable for that section to indicate it's been visited. And then when I get back here, the on slide enter event of the main menu slide will run the conditional action that looks for this tracking variable and will show or hide the check mark, the relevant check mark, depending on the value of that. So each time I click and I go back, there I've done it. Now, all of my sections are completed, but if I keep going to the sections, nothing else changes on my menu slide. So there's a little inherent weakness there. And there's another one. If I look at my, down the bottom, I have my table of contents, uh, sorry, my play bar down the bottom. And if I wanted to, my user could actually just click the forward button on the play bar and avoid this menu slide altogether. So what if I wanted to make things a little bit more sophisticated on my menu slide and now enforce the navigation and disable these other methods of navigation, such as a table of contents or the play bar? Well, that's what I'm going to show you briefly now. We'll go to this third example. And here on our menu slide, you'll notice we still have our check marks. And those check marks are not visible in output. But I also have a caption now which is also not visible in output, along with a special button down here, not visible in output, and that button will jump me according to the action to the start of the quiz. How is uh, the advanced action and variables now looking as a result of this little bit of extra complexity? Well, if I look at my variables dialog, there are no extra variables. So I don't need any extra variables to do what I'm about to do which is to make this a little bit more sophisticated. However, if I look at the Advanced Actions tab, and now I go and have a look at my Setup Menu Slide action again, I'll notice that it has become a little bit more complex. It's now got a section right at the, at the start before the Section 1, Section 2 done uh, decision blocks. And this little section here is to set up navigation. It's using a dummy condition. And what that means is that uh, it's a condition that will always be executed. So it says if 1, the number 1, is equal to the number 1, then perform these actions below. Now, of course, 1 is always going to be equal to itself. So these actions will always get executed. Every time this conditional action is executed, these will get done. So it's really not a condition at all. It's a dummy condition. So it just ensures that whatever you want to get done gets done every time. And the actions that we have here are to hide the button to continue on to the, the quiz, hide the caption that will provide a little bit of feedback there to tell the person they've completed all the sections. And those, those uh, two objects are this one here, the button down there, and also this caption. That's, they're both being hidden, even though they're already hidden. This is just a little extra insurance to indicate uh, that that's what we want to make sure that they, they're not showing when we first do the, visit the menu slide. And then also these next two actions, one is to assign CP CMND show play bar with zero. What's CP CMND show play bar? It's actually a system variable in Captivate which is designed to show or hide the play bar. And if you set that system variable to a value of zero, the play bar disappears. If you set it back to one, the play bar will reappear. And this other one, lock talk, is a special action that has only one function, and that is to disable the navigation of the talk, even though the table of contents is still visible. Um, and the else actions, we don't need any else actions in this case. Okay, so now coming in, the very first thing the conditional action is doing is disabling the navigation and making sure that these objects on are hidden still on the menu slide. Then we go through our sections and they're basically exactly the same as they were for the previous iteration of this little project. But then at the end, after we've checked all of these uh, sections to see what their tracking variable is set to and shown or hidden the check mark accordingly, 
Now the last section is called All Done, and that is checking all of these tracking variables to see if they are set to 1. And then if every single one of those variables is set to 1, so section 1 and section 2 and section 3, then it will show our special caption and our button, and it will unlock the table of contents, thus allowing navigation. So how does that look in practice? Well, if we just uh, execute a um, published version of this, and we'll see what it looks like. So there's my table of contents, and I could actually click these items and navigate to them right now, but remember on slide enter of the main menu slide, the first thing that the conditional action does is disable the navigation. So if I click this one now to go to the main menu slide, from now on, no matter what I click here, is disabled. I, I can't go anywhere via the table of contents, and if I scroll down a little bit, I'll find that my play bar has also disappeared as soon as I got to this main menu slide. So now if I click my sections, and then jump back, there's my check mark. I just go through each of the sections as I would have done on the previous version of this main of this um, project. And now I've done my fifth section. Look what happens when I jump back to the main menu slide now. There's my extra caption saying congratulations, you've completed all sections. Click the button now to move on to the quiz. And if I click that button, then I can start my quiz. So what have we learned? Well, in these examples that I've shown you, try to remember these two things. One, tracking variables. Having a variable that will determine whether something has been done or not done. And that's just two uh, a Boolean variables say yes or no, but you can actually use variables that will have any number of values and you can set those values accordingly, whether it's maybe not attempted, then attempted, but not completed, then completed. And that's what we'll show you in a little um, another tutorial later on. That's, that's one important feature of menu slides, tracking variables. The other one is using the on slide enter event, not just of the menu slide, but perhaps of the sections as well, to change variables and show and hide objects. So if you can understand what we've been covering through here, then in the next tutorial in this series, I'll take you back to my project uh, template and show you how the main menu slide of that particular project is done because it takes this again to another level. So I hope that was useful for you and thank you very much for listening.